are price tracking tools such as price charting and eBay past sales overall a positive or negative for the hobby? Overall, it's usually negative. Overall. I'm not going to say it's always negative. But when people, this is what happened to, to baseball cards in the 90s and comic books. What happens is that um, you see artificial trends up on prices, um, especially with something like eBay, because people will see the price and then that becomes their low basement price they're willing to accept. Right. They, no one uses it as a... No one uses it as a guide. It's supposed to be a guide because that's a guide. That's not People use it amount. as a pricing guide instead of a what should I be paying for this. Basically, in the hands of a, of, of a person who's going to buy, they can look at what things have been going for and decide whether or not what they're looking at is... Whether or not they even want to pay that price for that item. Yes. And if the item in front of them is a, at least somewhat appropriately priced for the current prices. The problem is, is that information can also fall into... And as a person who, who pr stickers games, I mean, it, we it, we do it. I mean, it happens. But a game comes in and you, we use the same information to develop a price, which is why you should always shoot for... If you're pricing and you want to make get your money's worth, you should always go for middle to lower of the road on eBay because that way you're not causing that price to constantly inflate or escalate. And that's part of the reason why cards crashed. Yeah. And a little bit like comics crashed too. It's like, probably like, part of the reason like why image. things like, like little Samson are going down in price finally. Um, here's why it's bad. Or when it can be bad. Um, when you got a Beckett price guide in the 90s, when you got a Wizard price guide, at least, at least Beckett would say straight out, so their prices, I mean, back in early 90s, my dad would buy Beckett Hockey Magazine, which had, had articles and it had the prices yeah. in the back of the cards. They would say it's based on, they tracked sales from conventions. They tracked sales, uh, private sales, like like bigger private sales. These, like JJ Games is, is a big one, that they sell games and have the price chart tool, which is so unethical to do that. Yeah. That's a whole other topic. How That's different. That's yes. extremely unethical. People will yell at me, I don't give a shit, that if you are one of the bigger uh, retailers of sold games that you also run, the app that, that's that, awful i'm not even saying there's any any chicanery going on there no but it's just it's that should be separate yeah that should be totally separate um that said they're not using they're only taking ebay into account and probably amazon they're not going to conventions they don't have people out there reporting prices how people report prices of pinballs and rq machines at, at auctions they're not doing that they're not taking into account private sales or sales at game shops things like that why does that matter? Uh, because if you lump that together, that's a more accurate price. Right. When you when you when you focus only on eBay and Amazon, what you find are the people who want the game then and now. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hunt for it, which means that they are naturally, basically, willing to pay more money for it. So even if you're going with lower end eBay or higher, you're getting you're getting you're you're getting the the top yeah. chunk of sure. prices. You're not getting. You're not getting what things are trading for. Like you said, on convention floors or in stores. Like you stores, say, yeah. a, a game in your shop might be. You might price it more than eBay, or sometimes less than eBay. Yeah, I often. I mean, because it's a different market. Yeah, I, I often price my, my prices are often not reflective of eBay. They're often below or above, and it just depends on what what's more popular. You know, so. Yeah, like, like, for instance, a Tecmo Cup soccer game, which is one that I always love to bring up. I don't know what I'd charge for it now because the price has gone, but that is a game that we generally always skew much lower than eBay, and a price chart is not taking that in, or a price guide is not taking that into a fair this is a, This is the other thing, the huge fallacy in this with, with these automatic price uh, checkers, because they, they take the sold listings, sure, that's fine. What if the game's not paid for? They're not following that. Well, and that's a that's a longer conversation about how the media reports on games and games collecting. Which when, we brought up with the $100,000 yeah, in the right, was paid for. It, it, it was the same but, thing a couple of years ago with with uh, stadium events. I've, These are not confirmed sales. This is just a big number you see next to something online. I've maintained for years that the Panesian games in my head were worth anywhere between three to $400. Just because, just because of things I kind of knew, how I always thought there was more out there than what you thought there were. Uh, for loose, for a loose Panesian, peekaboo, strip poker, hot slots, or both bad babes. So, uh, an auction went off uh, a few weeks ago. I was involved with it. And it went for a certain price. And that person didn't pay for it. So the second chance offer came to me. I didn't pay for it either. Which means two things. It went for a lot lower than the reported price, either in a private sale off eBay, or it was relisted. But you go on these price charting websites... 
it's still there. Right. It's there as that's what it sold for, and that's affecting the price, and that's obviously false. And by the way, the price it went for was about what I thought it's actually worth, because it wasn't a buy and it was an auction. That's a whole other conversation, too. So again, it's, it's troublesome. I see why they exist. It, it, it's good for some people that they, they exist. It's handy information. Yes. It's just it's just how it's used. Yes, it's how it's used. Because now um, you have people that'll price it in front of your face at conventions. They'll price it using that. Uh, eBay sold. I don't have as big a problem with eBay sold as long as people, as long as if they wait the auctions a little bit more versus the buy it now, that would be nice. Which but again, that's not done. If there, generally what we do. We if there was an algorithm that would wait, say, 70% auction versus 30% buy it now, or, you know, or something like that. Yeah. That, and, and would take out the extremes, especially in the buy it now, high extremes, take those out as outliers, because there's always shenanigans with that anyway, with people doing that and not paying, trying to corner the market, whatever else. So that's what I'm saying about it. So th there you have it. My long-winded answer to that.